hello and welcome to excellent link academy for today we're discussing about a very important topic in mathematics known as partial fraction i can see partial fraction let us call this concept a little bit by definition a partial fraction is simply a method or a technique of expressing a single fraction as a sum and different of several other fraction so i'm saying that partial fraction is simply a method or a system or a technique of expressing a single fraction as a sum and different of several other fraction i haven't considered definition of partial fraction let's un understand something when it comes to partial fraction, there are several rules that guides um, partial fraction. So there are about four rules that guides partial fraction. For today, we're discussing about the, the rule one that governs partial fraction. Let's start with rule one. Rule number one. All right, rule, rule number one says if the factor of the denominator are linear in the form ax plus b, I'm saying that if the factor of the denominator are linear in the form ax plus b, hence the partial fraction of the form a over ax plus b exist so i'm saying that row one says that if the factor if the if the denominator or perhaps if the factor of the denominator are linear in the form as plus b hence the partial fraction of the form a over as plus b exists so it means that if i'm having a linear equation i mean a linear a, a linear equation means an equation that has um the power to be equal to one look at if i have three x plus four this is a linear equation here this is a linear why because this x is this to power what one that's why it's linear so if, if i'm having a linear um expression like this the partial fraction for this expression becomes a over this one here three x plus four that's the concept let's um explain this rule one using an example Example one. Example one. Example one. Resolve. Resolve one all over x squared plus five x plus six into partial fraction all right i'm told to resolve one over x squared plus five x plus six into partial fraction how do you solve this what's your first tax my first tax here now is that i'll pick out the question so my solution i'm having one all over x squared plus 5x plus 6. I'm told to resolve this into partial fraction. What do you do first? Your first task is to consider denominator. So consider denominator. What's my denominator here? I have x squared plus 5x plus 6. Your first task, consider denominator. Right? This is my denominator here as an equation here. So it means that I'm going to express this equation in form of root. So if I solve this crisis, if I solve this one here quadratically, I'll be having x plus two and then x plus three. Solve this one here using um quadratic equation concept. So you have these two's answer here, right? So it means that from here now, it means that I'll be having one all over. So it means that your first tax there is to consider denominator as I did here. Then factorize it. You, you can use your factorization, uh, factorization method concept. Then you have these two roots. So if you don't know how to factorize, I'll drop a link in the description of this video, right? So, so you learn how to factorize using 
quadratic equation concept like um we have different methods we have the complete square method we have the graphical method we have the um what's it called factorization method and co a quadratic formula method right so you can use any of it to solve this one here so you have two roots my two root there now are x plus two and x plus three that's the concept when you are done with this what's the next tax so this, it means that the general form of this special fraction now will be equal to i'm having one all over one all over x squared plus 5x plus 5x plus 6 is equal to it means that the general form of this special fraction will be equal to what i'm having two roots so that becomes we said this this two roots are what are linear that becomes a over x plus 2 plus this is a linear one pick b over x plus 3 so because they are linear so hence that since they are linear in this form so it means that a over x plus b exists it means that a over this first one exists so i, I plus i can just use a again so that i'll use b over x plus 3 here as you can see right so what, what's my next tax here my next tax now is to find the lcm so I have one all over x squared plus 5x plus 6 being equal to since i'm having on um since i'm having um on like terms right they are not the same not some not a concept if denominator of two fractions are not the same hence the the lcm becomes the two you multiply the two so it means that my lcm here perhaps sorry lcm looking for lcm yeah so it means that my lcm becomes the two i'll pick out s plus two and what x plus three so if I, if, I look, if I look for my lcm here it means that the two becomes my lcm so what's the concept here if s plus two divide s plus two i am left with what um x plus three observe if these two here divide this one this will cancel out this left with what this one here so it means that i'll have a this a here into s plus three i'm done with this you divide this by this one this one cancel this one left with this one so i'll have plus this b here into x plus two i have this as my um expression after looking for my lcm here what's my next tax from this concept here obviously from here my next tax now is to equate numerator so if i equate my numerator for my numerator alone i have one then to be equal to a into x plus three plus b into x plus two i've just equate numerator <laughs> What's my next step here now? My next step is to expand, so, right? Expanding. If I expand through, I'll have one to be equal to a times x is ax plus a times three is what? Three a. Next up, plus b times x is bx plus b times two is two b. I've just expanded through now. What's my next task from this point here? My next task is to collect like terms, right? I'll be the one of x together and the one of a and b together. So collecting like terms. So the collect like, like terms from here, I'll have that one to be equal to ax, which I'm having x here, plus bx. Next up, plus 3a, sorry plus plus 2b i'm here at this point i just called it like terms at this point here yeah? all right at this point here what's the next tax and here my next tax is what factorize so if i factorize what do i mean it means i'm going to bring the one that has s together has already been done i have this one so i'll factorize this one now i'll have one to be equal to a x and s is common here bring out x into a plus b to be equal to x and x is common here so it means i'll have a plus b 
into x x times a is ax b times x is what bx or perhaps x times b is bx so i have plus 3a plus 2b i'm at this point here of course from here now what's my next tax my next tax now is to compare coefficient so comparing coefficient if i compare coefficient what will i have there so we'll start with the uh start, start for x so i have for x i have for x now for x um check at this point here i'm having only one there's no term attached to x here right so this one is a constant like one is not what, what do i mean by constant a constant is simply a number that does not have x so this one is a constant it doesn't have x so it's in that i have not no x value here so i have zero to be equal to check this part here which one is having x or perhaps pick out the coefficient of x the coefficient of x is a, a plus b so i have a plus b yeah call this equation one i'm done with for x so my next is what for constant so for constant now is that the term that does not have x so i'm having one here yeah? one to be equal to what 3a plus 2b call this equation two so i'll solve equation one and equation two using simultaneous equation concept so from here now so at this point here solve equation so i'm solving equation one and two using something else equation concept so it means that um from equation one from equation one i have that um a sorry i have that if zero is equal to a plus b so um let's make um a subject or perhaps b subject if a comes i'll have minus a to be equal to b so it means that anywhere i see b i'll put what minus a that's the concept so put um b to be equal to minus a into equation two my question is what i have one to be equal to three a plus two b anyway i see b i'll put minus a that's the concept so one is equal to three a plus two into this is b put what minus a at this point here one is not equal to three a plus two um hang on three a plus minus is minus two times is what i have two a it is not it means that one is equal to three a minus two a i'll have what there i'll have a so it means that a is equal to one so therefore a is equal to one i've got the value for a let's get value for b to get b is quite simple i'll recall from this equation three so this one now becomes equation three let's call it equation three so to get my value there so i'll have that from there i'll have that but we said minus a is equal to b from equation three so isn't that minus a sorry to get b now minus what's a we just say a is what one so a is one equal to b so therefore my b now is equal to minus one minus times one is what minus one so i'm having my a to be one and b to be what minus one so it means that the general form of the partial fraction will be equal to what's my question this is my question here my question is what one all over x squared plus five x plus six is not equal to we said the partial, the, i'll recall this one here so i'll recall the partial fraction general form which is this here so i have one sorry i have one all over this one here to be equal to a over x plus two but what's a okay recall it first recall partial fraction general form x plus two plus b over x plus three 
after recalling your general, your partial fraction general form what next put in your a and b so I'll have that a what's a we just a is one so one over x plus two plus what's b minus one i have minus one all over x plus three so it means that it means that if i resolve this one into partial fraction my answer becomes one over x plus two plus minus is minus one over x plus three so this is how we solve this here if i if i um okay i have one all over x squared plus 5x plus 6. If I resolve this in a fashion, I'll have 1 over x plus 2 minus 1 over x plus 3 as my answer after solving or perhaps after resolving this question into partial fraction. These are row 1 works. Next class, we'll discuss about how row 2 works much more better. So for, for row 1, understand the procedure and concept. When you're given a partial fraction to resolve, the first task, consider the denominator as we did here and factorize it. You have two roots, this and this. When you are done with the two roots, um, you, you write out the, the partial fraction general form, which includes your question to be equal to this first one. That becomes A over the first one plus B over the second one, right? So at this point there, you look for your LCM for the what? Um, equation at the what? um right hand side this one's here so i have this lcm so since that they are not the same the sm becomes the two right so divide this by this i'm left with this one multiply this one by this i have this so divide this one by everything here this cancel this left with this b times everything here i'll have this here then i'll at this point here equating numerator then i have um this procedure here as in this case so at this point here so at this point here um I'm saying comparing coefficients. What do I mean? Start with x. For x, is there a value for x here? For I'm not seeing only one here. There's no x here. No value having then or perhaps there's no any value with respect to x here. So it means that everything here, there's nothing like x here. Right? So is I'll be having zero to be equal to the coefficient of x here is a plus b. I have a plus b. Next up, um, there's nothing x I'm seeing. I'm seeing constant term. Constant term are simply numbers that do not have x. So I'm seeing 1. I'm left with 1. 3a and 2b. So they are, they are all constant. Why? Because I don't have an x. So it means that we have 1 to be equal to this equal to this 2 here. And solve this 2 simultaneously. And you have your a and b as in this case here. The one you are done, you through the procedure and you are done, right? So your task now is that copy down this, write them down. I don't expect you know everything now, or perhaps you understand the logic now. Write them down correctly. When you are done with this class, um, take a step down, revise them, right? When you are done revising, pick out that same question we used and solve it on your own. Then compare to what we have done here and you get it more better. See you in our next class. Thanks for watching.